So, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say a big thank you uh, for allowing uh, the Arkansas Real Estate Commission and uh, Heather Henry's uh, director offered here today and to opportunity to, uh, to answer some of these very good questions provided by the GRLA group and how supportive we are of the GRLA and all the things that ARA does to try to help educate and this is a part of that and we are just so excited to uh, play some small role in the partnership of making sure that we help consumers. So thank you very much. Should supervising brokers log and document their training? If so, how should that look or be kept for best practices? Uh, yeah, so I, I, this is between my ninth and 10th year being here. Um, and I've always longed, I, I, I have seen countless, countless brokers in this room um, with, the, with the charges against them failure to supervise. And I've never, and they always tell us, and then testimony is how well they train. And I've never one time, I keep waiting on it. I'm waiting on it. For one time, somebody to show up and say, here's my stack of sign-in sheets where people have signed in at my training on specific days on specific topics. You know what? I haven't seen one yet. And I don't think I'm ever going to see it. And you wonder how come when you read the case and you read the, the uh, charges and you see the broker's charge, you wonder how come we've ended up charging the brokers so many times. What is required of a broker? Quite a lot, actually. It, it is. Uh, when we were going over these questions, my first thought was sections 8 and 10 everything in sections 8 and 10 and then everything in 1742 301 at sec but the good news is we have broken this down into a guide it is the arec pb and eb uh, best practices guide and we have that on our website in digital form we've also got a really cool old school paper copy that you can uh, that you can request from the commission and we'll actually mail it to you if you want that brochure. With the increase in license numbers, we have lots of brand new agents coming out of real estate school and it seems like many of them don't have enough information. Can you address that and and let agents know how they should be working with those new agents? Our real estate exam is built to determine what an agent needs to know day one of becoming licensed. After that, both the agent and their supervising brokers are responsible for gathering additional knowledge. And brokers and supervising brokers should be paying particular attention to how their agents are trained, how they are mentored, how they work alongside other agents so that each agent has an opportunity to build their knowledge base. That is actually a requirement under regulation that supervising brokers, principal brokers, executive brokers are not just supervising agents, they are also training their agent. If you could speak to supervising brokers, what is one thing you would encourage them to do in their firm? Choose your other supervising brokers incredibly well and judiciously. There is a marked difference between a solid producer and a solid leader slash manager. And those processes are very often at odds with each other. When you are choosing executive brokers as a principal broker, it is very important that you choose executive brokers who can actually supervise. Now, there are people who can supervise and they can also produce, and that's wonderful. But there are some people who are just going to be better producers than they are leaders, and, and vice versa. Make sure you know how to spot those skill sets and then get those people in the right seats on the bus and you'll be set for success.